So, hello, I'm here with a new tutorial and this time I want to uh, share with you how I will paint this race guard um, knight that is, is uh, this race guard soldier and uh, the interesting here that where we focus is on how to paint the armor plates so in that case um, you see that I prime the miniature in white and now I will prepare the, the armor to be able to to apply the, the metallics so what I will do I will apply dark reaper that is a very dark bluish grey this is the the color when, once it's applied so it's looking like so I will apply this all over the miniature uh, all over the armor plates and then uh, this will be a good base for the metallics you also can do the same with black so this is why most of the times when you have a lot of armor it's better to prime in black because the metallics especially silvers and, and irons are, uh, are working better on top of black or dark color this time I wanted to use uh, this color to be less uh, um, darker because I will my objective will be to make a bright armor so I will apply this as a base color in all the armor plates and I will be back once this is applied so paint on, on the painting tutorial on this um, guy the race gland knight and um, now the next step I will start painting first the face before I start working on the mini on the armor to paint the face I will try to make a very uh, I will uh, uh, a standard face color I will use um, cadian flesh tone I'm doing first the face because it's the part that is here more hidden uh, and I like also to always to paint from the most hidden part to the exterior this is not going to be different if you have seen other of my tutorials of how paint faces I play first the Cadian flesh tone Okay. While this part is drying, I will paint the feet of this guy. To do so, I will use just very dark colors at the bottom. I will use the same color I use as a base. I will use yeah, the same color I use as a base color for. I will use. Then I decided to go for black. I will paint this part here. There are the strips of the armor. So. I a way to paint them to keep them visible one way to avoid to forget any detail is especially when you do um, priming in white is leave them visible until you need to paint them in that way you almost ensure that you are not going to forget this detail because you are not going to leave white spots on the miniature this is why sometimes I take the I'm carefully of not painting some of the details. So
painting this, this part here so I will, I will apply black as a base color and I will be back once the black is applied so one important thing that I want to talk about while I'm painting this I'm painting all these parts of the dozers and I want to keep the inside black and then the outside is going to be red so what you want to do now is to ensure that you apply the black correctly here if you are dirtying a little bit the part that has to be red is not a problem because we are going to paint this later on but what is important is that you do all these slots in black in that way when you paint in the red the black will be visible at the bottom so as you see here I just mess up a little bit it's not a problem and my, my objective here is that it's very clear that there is black inside so you will apply so keep applying this in all the slots Okay, so although no, it's not looking great, once we paint the red, we are going to correct all the mistakes we did now with the black. So you see here the leg with black, I will do the other leg. Working on this guy, the next step I will do, it's uh, I will apply a, a shade on the face. I will use race um, race grind flesh wash Rayland flesh wash flesh shade sorry and I will apply this to the face in that way I will see all the different details of the face are going to be visible. Okay, as well, I need to wait until this is dry completely before doing the next step. So now you can see here, I hope you can see here, the face, the white on the face is completely dry. So the next step I will do is I will paint the ace. I will first apply white. I will follow the same process as you have seen other times on my tutorials. First I will put some white. I don't apply the black before in that case because the shading around the edge is very nice and I don't think we need to apply extra shading with black. Other A is going to be much difficult to reach because we have the horn here in the middle of the way to, to reach it. Sorry I cannot make this visible on the camera but, but it's quite difficult to find a good position to paint A's. So this is white on the A's is done. And now if you make mistakes don't worry because at the end I we will correct the mistakes. I will use black on this one now.
Place at none. See if I show it. Okay. And now what I will do, I will use darker color to do the surrounding of the ace. I will use a brown color. The only color I will use that cloud brown. Something darker than the skin color. This is not dark enough. I will use Scrag Brown. So this is how the face is looking like. This part is a difficult one to see. And now to finalize with the face and, and before doing the beer I will do some highlights using first the Cadian flesh tone that I use as a base color. And the kiss left. So we will use the Cadian flesh tone. I will highlight mainly mainly the nose and here the top of the cheeks. Right, and I will paint the beer. I want to make blonde, uh, blonde beer, so I will use some easy desert color. Paint the mustache. Okay, this is the bottom of the helmet, so although I painted yellow, I will correct this very fast. So now I need to wait until this is dry. Uh, I will paint the horn at the same time. I will uh, the base color I will use for the horn is the Uzbati or the um, bone color. So I will use this one. Doing this right now because I have to. I want to finalize the the mouth part, and as the horn is going to the same part, I want to be sure that I finish all this correctly.
so we'll apply it here. Don't worry if you if I'm dirty other parts uh, what is uh, except the mustache, try not to, to dirt again the mustache. But the the part of, of the armor well I only will need to correct this later on. It's important is that we don't leave any part. Okay. This is done. No, while I'm waiting that this is drying, I, we need to wait until this is dry before doing the next step. Once this is dry, what I will do now is I will make, I will put a a shade, sorry, a shade of seraphine sepia on the mustache. We'll apply this here. And here. And then later, when, once this is completely dry, I will do the correction on the mistake that I did on the here on the armor. Okay, so I will let it dry, and I will be back once this is completely dry. So now the wash, and I also repair. So correct this the fail the fail here. Now what I will do, I will start and um, doing the right parts, and I will use in that case um, my fiston red. I want a light red, so I will paint all the right parts with my fiston red. So just. Is too thin. So I will be painting a base coat of red on all the. I will paint all the clothes on red, also the head and the feathers on the hair, on the yarn. So I will be doing that and I will connect back once this is finished. So working on that, what I did is I applied here Camry Brown, sorry I had a problem with the camera and was not well recorded. So I applied Camry Brown here on the X. I and then I was applying no racker flesh on this part of the clothes. And I also did some brown here at the palm of the hand of, of the gloves, the part that is visible, because there is normally these gloves have um, metal in one in the in the back of the hand to protect, and then the palm is made of leather to be able to make it flexible and 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 to make the yeah if not it will be very difficult to handle something if everything is metal like. And now what I'm doing is I'm painting. The, the clothes that I didn't paint on red before you remember I was painting on red and uh, some of the clothes I'm painting now them with uh, Rakar Flesh okay So I will paint all these parts on Dracar Flesh. As usually I apply the basic colors in all the different parts and I will start doing uh, the washes and then after the washes I will start doing all the highlights and for the armor I will wait until the last part 
because I want to go for a very clean armor and I want to avoid that the washers are dirtying the armor so this is what I'm not painting the armor at this moment as you can see and applying this it's white it's quite thin this paint I thin it quite a lot that way I will not cover the different details we'll need a little bit more time to dry but this is not an issue and then I will do these things on leather color so I will take XV88 it's the same color that I use for the palm of the gloves and I will use this XV88 for these things here Same here. This is done. We will do this on gold, this type of bowl here. as well as the mm, the ornaments on the horn and the handle will go in I, will, I think at the end I will do it in black to, to distinguish it from the rest of the so thin it down as well to avoid to cover the tails so if you thin it down, especially in white primer, will flow better. You can see gold is working very well on, on top of this gold is working very well on top of white primer. So you don't need to play, to apply another color before. If you are doing this on black, remember that you have to apply first a dark brown, or you can use Balthazar gold that is very dark gold. So I apply here, and I apply here on the ornaments of the horn. The way to do when you have this type of engraves, put the the brass and uh, the brush horizontal. That way you you benefit from the. Okay, you don't need to follow exactly the, the shape, you only need to put the brass horizontal, not to apply too much pressure and you will paint it, it easily. And now the miniature is ready to start with the washes and I will uh, just do one wash that is made of Agvax air shade again. You can see Agvax air shade is the, the main wash that I use. So I will start from the top. If I apply too much, I will so take it out later on. It's quite in that case I will go for quite a heavy wash, especially in the feathers because I want that the feathers uh, to pop up uh, all the different texture of the feathers. I got like L shade is working perfectly on top of red. And here I will go for a darker color, so you will see that this matching very well also with Rakar Flesh. This is what I use Rakar Flesh instead of white. It's not given. Then later on I can do some highlights, even with white at the end and make it almost white. But Rakar Flesh is working very well with this. So. Follow, try to follow the, the, the different textures, be careful that you don't forget, you don't miss any part you want to apply uniform wash if I'm dirtying a little bit the armor I don't care because I will paint it later on you see here you will see all the texture on, on 
at the end of, of the it's very nice that they have a here so I will apply also here on top of the horn of the horn And what I will do here is I will go down a little bit, not the full track. If you apply too much, you go you this, then you clean the wash. What I'm doing before is is drying. Okay, and I will apply as well on the wood. You'll see that the wood now is having a very nice color. And almost with one wash you have what you need. Here the palm of the gloves. Here also to make a nice trans hard transition between the, the horn and the hands. This will help. This is very straightforward, it's giving a very nice finishing to the miniature and almost you don't need to do much more work when after this wash. This wash is helping a lot to paint miniatures today. I will do the leather here at the back. Even if you forgot some white spots, this wash will cover them. And later on we are going to highlight so you will be able to correct any mistake and clean up if you apply too much wash in some areas. As you can see I try to, to to be sure that I apply a uniform wash and I'm not forgetting any detail. Okay. Why is the thing that you should apply in one layer? If you apply, if you reapply then to correct, will not look well. So it's important that you are very careful applying the wash uniformly all over the miniature, and you don't forget and you don't forget any spot. If not, you will need to repaint this spot, this part. So this is how it's looking like after the wash. I think it's looking pretty nice. And now we will wait until this wash is completely is completely dry. So I hope you have followed this. Now we we need to wait. So now that you see that the the wash is completely dry, but I will use I will start painting the armor plates using the speed metal. is a very light metal, very clear, very clean, and it will be a very it will give a very bright touch to the armor plates and I will go armor plate by armor plate applying this one try to give leave the, the the deeper parts with the color that I use as a base color okay for example here Quite a time-consuming, a time-consuming operation. But if you want to give a cleaner touch, cleaner look to the armor, it's worth it. So I'm going, you can see, go armor plate by armor plate, applying this light metal.
so I will keep doing that on all the armor plates and I will connect the camera once this part is finished so the metallic is applied on the armor and now what I will do is a pepper I glaze using cobalt alchemy to give a shading so I will apply this glaze, glaze all over the miniature The glaze is prepared mixing the cobalt alchemy together with Lamian medium. As you see, I apply this all over the armor. I will do the same on the axe We have to be careful to apply this uniform all over the armor and not leave any area without the glaze this will happen the same as with any wash. Later on, the result, if we want, need to correct, is not the same. It can be difficult to obtain the, the, the smoothness that is needed if we miss any part. So we are going to let it dry before doing any other operations here. Because the next step will be will proceed to start highlighting and defining well the different armor plates using the shades as a reference. So this is how it looks like now, very bluish. So now I will let it dry. I will be back to do the final touch. This is how the armor is looking like after applying the the glaze with the bluish color. Now we are going to pass to apply the the speed metal again this light color. So, we have to mix it very well. And then, we 
we and this time it's important that we have keep the blue at the bottom so most likely we will need to do two layers of this lighter color to have solid metallic view and not too much blue on that so we are going to start And it's important that we leave the blue in the recesses. So now it can be time consuming. You can see here I will do first this arm. And this plate, especially this plate here. We're going to apply this. So we are going to keep doing that on the different armor plates in that case the transition is going to be smoother than what we tried before with the darker blue that I use as a base So we keep okay. It's important that we do the edges of the armor. And also this part here. So I will keep doing that, playing the the this silver color. I will keep doing that on the different armor plates leaving the blue as a shadow of the armor and I will be back once this work is finished so you see here how it's looking like at this one so this is how it looks like now that I did I apply it again, again spin metal and now what I will use is noon oil again and this time I will apply noon oil on the armor but just on the different recesses so carefully you apply where is needed and maybe not in all the recesses so I will start for example here on the neck I want to, to have a good separation between the the yelm and the Armor, the other armor plate. Try not to put too much. Here I will apply a little bit, just. And maybe you need to do two washes if you are not happy, instead of making a heavy one. Okay. Here on the armor plates of the leg, I will apply just a very thin one between armor plates.
but you see I'm following the different armor plates okay here on the axe I will apply it here on the on the base where you have to be careful is where in areas like that I will not apply here what I will do on the for the front the glove I will just apply a little bit here and very little here So I will keep doing that, applying a little bit of this wash on the different recesses of the armor. Try to be very soft, I will not wash all over the miniature, just apply it where it's needed. For example here below the, the arm is area that you should apply. Of here where this armor plate is finishing. Just to show the segmentation of the armor, to show the different segments of the armor. apply too much, take it out so I will keep doing that and I will connect it and we not so the armor plates I don't know consider them finished now what I will do is I will start highlighting the red and the black to highlight the black, I will start using um, stone vermin fur and as well the, the, the whitish colors. I will apply, in that case, I will do highlights with grays because to break a little bit with the bluish color of the, of the armor. So, first I apply. Vermin for you apply where you think should be highlighted. The next we are going to use will be administrating way and I will keep the stone burning full next to me in case the highlight is too aggressive. So I will
and I will not do apply in all the highlights that I did before and not in all the parts Okay, this should be enough. And the next, the feathers I will not do more than that. What I did, maybe another wash of of noon oil I will do on the feathers but what I will do now is I will start highlighting the red and this time I will use Mephisto red and Wild Rider red it is more orange than red I don't know why they put this name so I will start first with the Mephisto in red Apply where I think the light will impact And then I will apply the wild rider red and if I play too much I correct I do the correction with the previous color So I will be doing that on the red, applying the highlights where I need it. So this is how it's looking like after doing the highlights. Now I'm going to paint the white. So I will go for Rucker Flesh again. So it's not really white, it's this beige color, cream color. So what I will do is I will highlight one by one all these different things folds or I don't know how to call it okay so you go one by one highlighting them Then here, the back, I will highlight just here. I will not do anything at this moment. Okay.
and in that and in that part here that the detail is very thin, I will do a very soft dry brush. This should be enough. Now I will use palette witch flesh and I will keep will keep bracket flesh in case I, uh, it's too bright and I will do a second layer of highlights on on this white thing so I will something like that then here like making a thin line, line in each one of these folds So this is this will be the th the way to do that. Now it's missing the handle of the axe, the axe. I will use another brown to distinguish from the wood. And I will go for very dark brown in that case. That way is going to be different from the wood. Maybe I will use this one. Is this is more yellowish? The other one is we paint. The handle, the let this like is if it's leather. Okay, now on the golden parts, I will use first the henna's gold that was the base color. So we will give just yes. 
because after the white looking very dull so I wanted to make it bright brighter and I will do the same on the horn to increase the brightness And now to make it a little more bright, I will use Auric Armor Gold. What I will do is, for example here I will just make like a dot, and a little bit here. And then on the this thing, I will try to follow the different ornaments. And the If you find that it's too bright, you can use the hand as well to compensate in some parts. Then I will paint the hole of the horn. So first I will use Reynolds height and dark brown to make a circle. Okay. And I will use black in the middle of the circle. Okay. The last thing that I will do on the home is I take the white bark I will follow all the different ornaments of gold to have a good separation between between the, the cream color and the gold and that guy is going to be it's going to pop up more the golden ornament from the horn. Okay, I just follow here with. Okay, and I will do some lines following. So I will do something like that.
Okay. Some longer than others and some thinner than others. So you want to do, I keep doing, so I will do another one here, for example to show this is very short, then we can make another one shorter here, just make it irregular. But it's in, in the first thing that is important is that you you ensure that you f you applying this darker color around all the gold. For example, here I will do another long one. So you start like a triangle, and then you throw a line. And then, if you see that there is a thicker part, you just correct a little bit. That way. The same here. But it's more difficult to do it. Then I will complete and finish the full round. And here I will do one small one or two is very small. This one, for example, this will be look okay. And then the horn will look like that. Okay, I think today they look. it will do better. The other thing I will do with this same brown is to apply this on the different recesses like here to be sure that I have a strong transition between the armor and the axe and the leather at the, at the palm of the hand. So this is this is finishing the miniature at this point. So let me take the camera. So this is how the miniature is looking like now. This is the work that I was showing on the horn. The guy, the armor. I wanted to go for a very bright armor. Here the highlights on the black maybe are too um, strong, but this thing is working with this miniature. Uh, I will give the meter finish it at this point. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. You find something useful, how to do uh, a different way to do the armors, how to do the horn, how to paint red, how to paint the wood of the axe, uh, and that's all. So it's quite interesting miniature to paint. It's finished. I give the the meter finish at this point. So I want to thank you everybody for watching this video, please comment, like if you like it, subscribe if you don't subscribe it, let me know and um, what would you like to see, if you have any idea that's something that you would like to see in more detail, and uh, know what the next point is, I will paint dark brown all this, uh, the, the rim of the base, but it's just the final touch. So I hope you have enjoyed the, this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!